hope you're there. As you can see, I'm in the church and I've come in here to talk about saints. Yesterday was All Saints Day when we remember all the saints that have ever been and all the saints that ever will be. And the church is a place where we come to remind ourselves that we are continually in the presence of the saints who form an invisible cloud around us. How are we reminded of the presence of saints in the church? Well, as you can see behind me, we have a stained glass window. And often stained glass windows do have saints in them. Our windows in St Mary's Church aren't very full of saints. We only have a couple, in fact. If you go to other churches, big cathedrals, you'll find that they have massive stained glass windows going right from floor level up to the ceiling, and they can be full with pictures of hundreds of saints. Or may not be stained glass windows. It may be there are sculptures uh, carved in stone or wood, and you can see many of those in the big cathedrals around the land. Who were the saints? Well, the saints were people of holiness and goodness, people who led very fine lives, were recognised as being splendid people in their own lifetimes, and after they died, they were generally reckoned to be good examples for us to follow. And so the church would say about this person, yes, that person was a saint, and so they'd be declared a saint. And so there's a big list of saints somewhere. We've got a small list here, um, but we've got a, there are, but there's a big list of all the saints that have ever been named as saints, and you can find it quite easily online if you want to. It isn't, of course, only those people who ever have been holy and good in their lives. These are just ones that have been recognised and a case has been made for them so that it's been declared that quite clearly these are people who are deserving of the title of being saint, which, as I said, just means good and holy. People whose lives throughout showed all the Christian values. I said the saints were. And of course, it's not true that saints are people who died. There are saints all around us, good and holy people. Doubtless, some, many, most, all of you that I'm talking to could qualify as saints. Though the church has tended to reserve the name, the title saint for those who've died, those who've come to an end, you can look back over the whole of their lives and check that they managed to keep it up right to the end. Terribly easy to pick up bad habits in old age. And the saints were generally people who didn't do that. What saints can you think of? Well, if this were, if we were in the hall and we were doing this in the usual way, I'd ask you to put up your hands and tell me some of the saints you know. Well, we can't do that now. So um, how about we start with the ones whose flags come together on the Union Jack? First and foremost of those for people who live in England may be St George, who's got, of course, a red cross on a white background. So George, best known perhaps for killing a dragon. We might want to keep quiet about that. After all, we don't hear about any dragons after St George. It'd be a great shame if it turned out he'd killed the last one ever. The next flag would be the flag of St Patrick, who is the patron saint of Ireland. As you know, St. Patrick's cross is a red diagonal cross on a white background. When Patrick was 16 years old, he was walking along the beach in Wales, where he'd been born, when some pirates seized him. They took him to Ireland and sold him as a slave, where he worked in the fields. One day he heard God telling to him to escape, and he ran down to the sea where he found a ship waiting to take him home. When he was grown up, he heard a voice calling on him to return to Ireland and tell the people there about Christianity, which is what he did. 
He's known for various stories. One of them is he used frequently to use the shamrock, a little plant with leaves, like three-leaf clover. And he used to use the three leaves of the shamrock to explain to people that God was Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's also famous for having driven all the snakes into the sea so that to this day there are no snakes lurking in the beautiful green grass of Ireland. As with all the saints, there are many legends about St. Patrick. Another one is that when he was still a boy, he used to look after his aunt's flocks of sheep. One day, a wolf jumped into the field, took a young lamb in his mouth and ran off with it. That evening, St. Patrick's aunt was angry with him for not taking better care of the flocks. So Patrick prayed all night that the lamb would come back to them. And in the morning when he was in the fields, the wolf appeared once again with the lamb in its mouth. He came up to Patrick and put the young animal down in front of him. The little lamb got up and ran back, ran back to its mother. Next we have St Andrew's cross, which is a white saltire cross, diagonal cross on a blue background. He was Jesus' first disciple, having been baptised by John the Baptist. He was the brother of St Peter. He was sentenced to death by crucifixion in Greece. He was actually by origin Greek. Andreas means brave. And he was due to be crucified on a cross as Jesus had been crucified. But he said, I'm not worthy to be crucified in that way. And he requested that he be given an X-shaped cross so that he could die on a cross different from Jesus. He said he wasn't worthy to be crucified in the same way as Jesus. Here's a painting of St. Andrew with a famous Greek painter called El Greco. Notice you'll be able to recognize from now on any painting by El Greco because the figures are so very tall and have long arms and long thin bodies and legs. The patron saint of Wales, St. David, was a vegetarian and he persuaded the people of Wales to eat leeks as they still do to this day and when he was baptized as a baby he was baptized by a blind monk and some of the water in which he was being baptized splashed into the blind monk's eyes and from that moment on the blind monk could see so from his early years David was clearly someone who was set out to be a good and holy man the flag of Wales, the flag of St. David, doesn't appear in the Union Jack, of course. That's because when the Union came about, Wales had already been part of England for a very long time. So the Welsh flag doesn't appear. It's a dragon. And I think that was the Welsh laughing at St. George for having killed the last one. We don't have pictures of any of those saints at our Church of St Mary's. In fact, we only have two saints. We have St Mary, who was the mother of Jesus, and St Elizabeth, who was the mother of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was born six months before Jesus, and Mary went to up into the hill country of Judea above Jerusalem to visit Elizabeth, her cousin, who was going to have uh, John the Baptist. And when Elizabeth heard Mary coming in, the baby John gave a leap inside her. And Elizabeth shouted at the top of her voice to Mary, of all women, you are the blessed one. Mary said, me? Why are you calling me the blessed one? You're the one who's going to have a baby. And Elizabeth said, no, of all women, you're the blessed one because the fruit that you're going to bear, the baby you're going to have is blessed too. I'm amazed that the mother of my Lord Jesus should be coming to me. Look, when I heard you greeting me, the child inside me gave a great leap 
for joy. Mary, I remember, had not yet had Jesus, so Elizabeth was speaking prophecy when she said that this baby that Mary was going to have was going to be a great one, was going to be the Lord. And if you look on the altar at our church in St. Mary's here, you will see St. Mary. She's the one on the right with a blue robe and a pink robe talking to Elizabeth on the left. So Mary and Elizabeth. When Mary was visiting Elizabeth, it's called the Visitation. So there we have in our altar at St. Mary's a painting of the Visitation. So here you have another picture, as you saw at the beginning, of the eastern wall of our church. There's the altar at the bottom. You can see the picture of the Visitation with Mary and Elizabeth. And above there's the stained glass window with Mary in there again. And the thing about a stained glass window is that somebody once asked a child, what is a saint? And the child replied, well, a saint is someone in a window, someone who, someone who lets the light in. A saint is someone who lets the light in. And you see, there it is. It's absolutely true. It's not just people who are particularly wonderfully special and have been given the great honour of being called a saint. Any of us can let the light in. If we live our lives fully by the Christian values, the very values that you learn at school, those values have been part of the way of, of life we've been living for at least the last 2,000 years. And now you can see it in the context of All Saints Day. So we can't sing a hymn, we can't sing a song, but we can say a prayer. So will you close your eyes for a moment and we'll say a prayer. Then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together and I'll dismiss you with a blessing. For all the saints who went before us, who have spoken to our hearts and touched us with your fire, we praise you, O God. For all the saints who live beside us, whose weaknesses and strengths are woven with our own, we praise you, O God. For all the saints who live beyond us, who challenge us to change the world with them, we praise you, O God. In our school, in our homes, in our lives, Lord, help us to be like them. Amen. So we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God give you grace to follow the saints, in joy and peace and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Hope your days go well, and may this strange season we're in be kind to you. <laughs>